Hello Internet, here's a quick tip. You've probably tried debugging your game by using these debug.log statements or something similar to that. That's useful to a point, but sometimes you actually want to be able to see what is happening in your scene. And there's actually some debug scripts that allow you to print uh, lines into your scene. So you can actually see like collisions or ray casts of projectiles or whatever else you want to use. Um, so we're going to demo that here. So I'm just going to create a new script here and we're just going to call it our ray tracer. That's not a good name, uh, but we're going to, that's what we're going to call it. So the difference between this and say a gizmo is in gizmos, you do avoid on draw gizmos and you would create a new function for drawing gizmos. This function allows you to embed these inside of your, your script. So inside of an update, I can do debug dot draw line, for example. And so this is going to take a start, an end, a color, and a duration. Uh, those color and duration are both optional. And there's also an optional depth test, which is going to test whether it should draw behind or in front of the object. And so we can we can demo that as well. Uh, but this transform.position, and I'm just going to draw something that goes forward. So transform.position plus this transform.forward for example. And so we don't actually need to provide anything else. The defaults are going to be provided. So if we actually go and inspect this function with F12 in Visual Studio Code, we should be able to see all of these functions and all the defaults. And so this internal default value is going to be color.white. It has a default duration of zero and it has a depth test of true, which means if there's something in front of it, it's going to draw more transparent. Um, if you set this depth test to false, it's going to draw on top of everything in your scene, um, which makes it a lot more easy to see, but can be a little bit disorienting if you're not looking for that. Duration is going to be the total time that whatever this debug thing is going to stay around. So if you set this to something greater than zero, say two seconds, it's going to stay on your screen for two seconds after you do that. So if you have a ray trace for a bullet, for example, you could keep it on the screen, that, that specific projectile on the screen for multiple frames so that you can actually see it. <laughs> um, we're going we're gonna to leave everything as the default because this is everything you need to actually make this work. Um, and so because we're not drawing gizmos, we're not going to see this until I actually start my game. Uh, and so I'm actually using this already in this scene. So you'll see a few extras, but we can just attach this to a game object here. And I'm going to move this up a bit. So you can see this little gray circle. Let's actually add just a cube. So it's a little bit easier to see. And you'll be able to actually see us rotate this now. Uh, make it a little bit smaller just so it doesn't interfere. Again, we don't have the depth test overridden. Uh, so you would actually, it'd be obscured. Uh, but now we should be able to run this and we should see a white line up here or not, or we won't see a white line. And I've, I've completely screwed this up and it's not drawing the line. This to transform to position, draw line. Okay. That's correct. Weird. Um, huh. Vector three dot zero there. Let's try that. That ought to work. Why didn't it work the first? Oh, were we not running? We were. Yeah, there we go. So there's our line. All right. I don't know what I was doing wrong before, but we can undo this and probably get something back. Like I said, you need to be running your game for this to work. And oh, oh, uh, I know what's going on. <laughs> um, let me unsnap this from from a 2D view and you'll, you'll be able to tell. <laughs> um, it was going into the screen. Uh, so we were actually just casting our array straight forward, so we weren't we weren't able to see it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Forward in in two D space is along the z axis, which doesn't exist. Um, so the, the, yeah, that's handy. But uh, this gives us a way to sort of draw these points. So instead, we're gonna swap this out for say right, because that's probably what we wanted anyway. And then we're going to add just a few extra things. So we're gonna do color dot red. We're going to say the duration is equal to two and that should be it. We're not going to change the depth test right now. This should just give us a whole bunch of red lines. And so I should be able to rotate this along the Z axis and you'll see we get all of these extra lines because every single frame we're drawing these. 
And so now we're getting a bunch of uh, effectively ray traces or, or debugging traces in our scene view. They don't show up in your game. Um, they'll just show up in your scene view. And you can use these to kind of debug a whole bunch of different things, whether it's like checking for vision or ray, ray casts or anything else that you need to show, I guess, in your, in your scene to kind of debug it. And so the final thing is uh, we can't tell this because our cube is too small. But if we move our cube towards us, or not, OK. Uh, we don't need a depth test for this, apparently, because it isn't detecting the cube and drawing it. But uh, if you want to always be able to see this, you would enable this depth test and uh, set it to false. Uh, so by default, it's true, which means it's actually going to check the depth of all the objects in your scene. If you set it to false, it's not going to do that. And it's going to ignore the depth map effectively and just draw everything on top. And so because these are happening afterwards, you're, you're going to get a, all of your debug information on top of everything. For 2D games, I would recommend turning this off because that just makes more sense because there isn't really that depth. For 3D games, it's going to be kind of uh, dependent on what you're debugging. And so that's going to be sort of your choice. But this kind of gives you a handy way to do this without having to like store things and then print it out in an Andra gizmo. Um, there's multiple versions, so there's debug uh, draw line or, or draw ray as well, which does the same thing, just for ray casts. And so this accepts a start and a direction instead of two points. Um, so hopefully, these are things that you can uh, you can use in your game. And uh, if you do, I'd love to hear about it. So uh, leave a comment if you if you're if you're using this in your project. And if there's other things that you want to hear or see, uh, let me know about those as well. Other than that, that's all I have for this video. So until next time. See you, Internet.